Hello and welcome to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Today we have a Class AB Dual XPA 4.100 amplifier that we will be repairing today. And this is your uh, standard Class AB 4 channel layout as you'll see in a lot of the amplifiers that are posted on my channel you'll see your common emitter resistors your classic telltale sign of a class AB amplifier you got your rail capacitors here you have your rectifiers power supply using the IRFZ 44 ends uh, for the power supply looks like they're doing three for the push three for the pull using a TL 494 IC here and your protection circuit here and they're using the 631 and the 600s for the uh, output stages so let's run through the board here and find the the fault of this board so they use the B688 and the D718 output transistors also on that and I'm going to use uh, resistance of course to find any bad potential parts on this board and I will typically always start at the power supply and I just watch the meter looking for any low resistance values across the legs of the transistors so I'm seeing 316 ohms between the gate and the source, which is what you're going to find because they are pulling the gate down with a 200 ohm resistor, plus you have to count in your gate resistor. So you have your 200 and this is a 220 ohm pull down resistor coming in at about 216 ohms and then you have a 100 ohm resistor for your gate resistor which is coming in at about 98 ohms so that's the reading that I'm seeing between the gate and the source a total of 316 ohms so that's correct so that's what I ex would expect to see between the gate and the source so 315 and then I'm just checking across the, uh, the drain and source also for any low ohm resistance so the power supply seems to be fine, so let's check the output transistors. So the base uh, collector do emitters. Looking for any low ohm volume, so we're, we're about 3 mega ohms. 3 to 2.7 with your positive lead on the base. three point four and oh here so here between the base and the collector we have thirty four point five ohms and then between the base and emitter thirty four ohms so this one has a low ohm resistance and this transistor here this six eighty eight has point four ohms between the base and the collector and then the base and the emitter 0.4 ohms so this transistor right here has a dead short across it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that transistor out of circuit leaving a portion of the legs in the board which makes it easier for me when I heat the bottom side to grab it with a pair of tweezers and slide it out of the via so now I'm going to do is I'm going to check the resistance between the base and the emitter again on the transistor. So we're still showing a 40 ohm short 
on the uh, 718 here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out also. And now checking between the the base and emitter, I have my three mega ohms, which is good because that's telling me that my pre-drive circuit has not been damaged. Well, just from a resistance point of view, I mean, uh, when we introduce a signal, you could still have a bad transistor cutting off the sine wave or pulling the sine wave to ground or pulling it to the positive rail it just depends on if there is a fault on what direction that fault's going so what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply power to the amplifier now these are out so i've got my two ohm current limited power supply here paying attention to the led on the side i do have a red light that comes on but I'm not seeing a green light. So let's get the scope hooked up here. And now we're gonna use the oscilloscope to help locate if there is a problem with the power supply. So if you look at the scope, you'll see that I'm showing 12 volts on the gate. I'm showing negative. Voltage across all three terminals. All right, let's, uh, let's reference the scope to the right. I was on the positive terminal. Oh, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and see what our power supply is doing, which it is doing nothing because I don't have a fuse in place. It does help. It does help to have a fuse in place. So let's just slide a fuse in here. And again, watch the LED on the end here. And I do get a green light. So I should have my power supply drive, which I do. And there it is, a absolutely clean power supply drive there. Looking spectacular. Make sure I don't have any abnormalities going on on the output. Looking good there. So what's the rail voltage on this? So let's go back to the uh, output here and our rail voltage is 24 volts negative and 24 volts positive positive. and it's key why I mentioned those numbers an amplifier will only put out as much as the rail voltage can provide so what does that come down to that comes down to the typical failure of amplifiers, which is clipping. If you try to push this any further than 24 volts, you're going to clip the signal, turns into a flat kind of a DC output uh, to the speaker, and then it just it wrecks havoc on the power supply. So you'll find that that. 23 volts is going to be across your 
pre-drivers here. So that's the most that your signal can do is a positive and negative 23 volts. You try to exceed that and it will clip the signal. All right, let's inject a signal into this amplifier here and see what the preamp sections look like. And there we are, 50 hertz, 50 hertz, and let's try the other two channels here. Fifty hertz. Which one? Which other one was it? Oh, well, there's no outputs in this, but as you can see, I do have a fifty hertz signal um, at the base of these transistors. Um, it, you're seeing this because it has no feedback on it, because the transistors are out of the circuit. So, uh, at least I am showing that fifty hertz signal there. So the preamp section is good to go. It survived. No problems there. What I'll do is I will replace the 688 and the 718. Let me get my drawer of transistors here. So I have a 718 and a 688 ready to go in. That's a 1047. That's not going to work. Um, where's the 718? So I do have a 718 floating around here somewhere. Six eighty-eight. Where's my 718s? Aha. 718. 688 and 718. Alright, so what I'll do is I will get these transistors installed and we will check that output. I'll be right back with you. Alright, I've got the two transistors replaced here. And let's see here, let's ground the scope and see what our signal looks like across this transistor. And there it is, our 50 hertz signal, looking perfect. No heat. Uh, let's check our output terminals here. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. So our 50 hertz and our 50 hertz. And let's verify the other channel, the other two channels. Uh, 50 hertz and 50 hertz so this four channel amplifier is back up and running a simple shorted set of the B688s and the D718s is what took out this amplifier we replaced those two output transistors verified the signal and all is good to go so I'll get this back in the heat sink. We'll do some load testing on it and make sure that it uh, has the longevity and durability that I expect and we'll get this back on the road. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like repair content and I will catch you on the next one.